Bonjour, I'm Vivian, and welcome to the beautiful Loire Valley of France, home to the world's most spectacular fairy tale castles. It is also the location of my home, a small neo Renaissance chateau, which I share with my husband Simon, daughter Isabella, and our delightful pets. However, this is not our first chateau. For 17 years, we lovingly restored and adored a much larger castle until we decided to downsize. Now, we're doing it all again, just on a smaller scale. So join us for some chateau fun, chateau life, chateau renovations, chateau travel, chateau food, and chateau love. Welcome back to the Chateau Love Vlog. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Isabella and I am Vivian and Simon's lovely daughter. <laughs> I apologize for not being on camera very often. It's been exam season um, for me at university and so I've not only been exhausted but also very wrapped up in work. However, I've recently finished, so I will hopefully be participating a little bit more in some of the sections, especially Cheese of the Week, my personal favorite. <laughs> um, but the reason why I'm here today is because it's American Mother's Day, and so I have a few surprises in store for our beautiful Chatelaine. <laughs> um, love it if you came to join me. <laughs> I'm trying to record. What? We're back. <laughs> in case you were wondering where we were, well, we are still right here, still in lockdown. The good news is that this is ending in a couple of days and we are so excited. We recently celebrated Mother's Day, American Mother's Day, which was a surprise <laughs> on any given year. Um, it can be British Mother's Day, American Mother's Day, or French Mother's Day, which this year is going to be at the end of May. Um, but the greatest surprise for me was Isabella making the little video that you just saw for you. She is the most incredible daughter, uh, but she's been very shy about appearing in these little videos. I completely understand the world is full of trolls, but it has been my experience that this has been an overwhelmingly positive uh, thing. And in addition to the original intention of making silly videos for our immediate friends and family who are spread from Australia to Cyprus, to America, to Canada, all of you out there have been so welcoming and delightful. So Isabella has finally started to warm up to the idea. <laughs> so here we are everyone, we are now back in our kitchen and I am very excited to get started on Ma's first surprise. So I think this will be a nice one because not only is it in keeping with our little French chateau theme, but it's also a big favorite of hers. And that is French toast. Or as we like to say here, pas perdu. <laughs> now I love the expression pas perdu because in French it means lost toast. And as a child I never understood why your toast would be lost. I thought the French were just very bad at keeping it on their plates for some reason. <laughs> um, but I've now grown to understand that it has a different meaning. Um, so yes, let's get started. All done and put into the pan. It's time to show you the sizzle. <laughs> Look at that. Nice and blonde, just like me. Just kidding. Now that this is all cooking, all that's left is to serve it up. So I will come back to you in a bit with Mama and the big surprise reveal. <laughs> okay, so this is the final table. Um, we've got our French toast, Papa du right here, a card and some beautiful flowers my papa bought. Um, just earlier today. Now I'm very excited because she's actually just about to walk in through the door. Ma? <laughs> Are you calling me, sweetheart? Yes. Would you like to come on in? <laughs> Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Good morning, I'm still in my pyjamas. So. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> None of us are, it's fine. It's the morning. So we made you French toast. Oh my god. <laughs> this is beautiful. And we got you, we got you 
Beautiful. Being in lockdown makes making exciting videos for you a little bit difficult. Nothing is open, etc., etc. But this is all changing soon, and we are incredibly thrilled. If you want to see just how locked down we've been, here is a trip to our local supermarket where every single non essential aisle has been blocked off completely. Clothes, shoes, anything that isn't food or pharmaceutical related. And all other non-essential shops have been completely closed. Next week, we're actually taking you on a real adventure to another part of France. And most importantly for us, we are leaving the Chateau for the first time in nearly a year. <laughs> and some roses coming out. Oh my gosh. Let's go you smell this? Smell. Yeah, that's what I'm taking for uh... <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Okay, I'm coming up to our asparagus patch now. The first asparagus have started coming up in the asparagus patch. Before we moved to La Croix Boise, to our little chateau here, I had never known actually how asparagus grew, and it's incredible because it literally just pops up from the ground. And um, after planting, it often takes two to three years for it to actually be able to be harvested. So we were so incredibly lucky to be able to have this waiting for us when we bought this house. So here we go. We're gonna cut the first bits of asparagus. Oh, there's one at the end down there. Woohoo! I love this because it's like an Easter egg hunt. Yeah, you, oh, there's two down here. Woo. Just basically walk the row. <laughs> Look, you just walk the row and there they are. Yeah, so that guy, this little guy needs a little bit longer, but this one's good. This one's good. I don't. Yeah, these whopper, things grow to an enormous they? height if you let them. Uh, you've got to cut them before so that... Yeah. Uh, and look, this one's really fat. Yeah. <laughs> look at all the different shapes. <laughs> Isn't this funny? <laughs> wow. There. Keep going, there's more down there. Look at this. Yeah. That's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you, because we're actually getting quite a lot now. Well, there's enough for dinner and probably... Oh. Okay, lovely. Here we go, look. There's another one. Yeah, and then as we go down the row, here's another one here. While I'm out here, look at the rhubarb. It's actually covered in flowers. And. Oh, but it has a. Oh, there are some pink pieces there. Might have to take some of that in as well. Another challenge to providing you with some interesting tidbits about our life here is that sometimes the jobs that we have to do are not very sexy, but they still need to be done. One of those is our perpetual challenge to create storage. Many people assume that a large house, and especially a chateau, has lots of nooks and crannies, but this is absolutely not the case. In days of yore, people had far fewer clothes and used wardrobes. In our last chateau, we actually transformed an entire bedroom into a dressing room, but this is not possible in our very gorgeous but much smaller little chateau. So we have an entire room with unpacked boxes of clothes needing a home. This is an extraordinary mess. It is a jumble of clothes, um, tools, bedding, uh, <laughs> riding equipment, <laughs> handbags, hello handbags, and oh, I've been missing you, handbags. I can't wait for you to come out. And uh, it looks like even some plumbing equipment. 
Even though we bought La Coiboisée a couple of years ago, pretty dresses and scarves and shoes have seemed somewhat obsolete for the last 14 months. However, this is all about to change, so we need to free our frocks. <laughs> so this is incredibly embarrassing because as we all know, one should never air one's dirty laundry uh, and should keep one's skeletons in the closet and in the attic, I suppose. Well, we're, we're sort of in both. And so as you can see behind me, it's just incredible. All of the things that we still have not unpacked um, the other challenge is that until recently we had intended to put bathrooms in the turret, but after numerous consultations with experts, it became clear that this would absolutely be an impossibility. So Simon has embarked on an incredibly kind project to create storage for Isabella and me in the turret. This might not be exciting for you, but we are over the moon. <laughs> Cannot wait to see our new closet. It's gonna be so amazing when it can actually go into this lovely turret that Simon has so lovingly prepared for us. But as you can see, you have to really spray it uh, really well. These are the beams I'm going to spray. And in here, I have my xylophene. So as you can see, I'm doing a thorough soaking in the wood. And this needs to be done when the wood's being attacked, it needs to be done every hour three times. Oh my goodness. What is going on in here? Well, we had some rotten uh, beams under the floor. So before I go and build <laughs> all of the uh, storage and everything in here, I've got to fix it. So there's the floor. Where's the rest of the floor? It's gone, it was all rotten. So this, is, this bit's good, it's okay. So just this morning you have pulled up all of this floor. That beam was literally uh, powder, so that's come up and I've oh had to gosh. build this to replace it. So that is a beam that you've... So it's basically four pieces of wood, which I've glued and screwed together. Okay, so this will form the beam. Um, it'll provide plenty of support for the flooring that's going to go back in place. I'm going to replace it with some fresh boards. When I came up here to look at it, there was quite a bit of movement, so I was concerned that uh, yeah. we had quite an extensive problem, but it's really these so two So it's not beams. something we could just carpet over. <laughs> you could, but, you know, in uh, I don't know how long again, you might, be, um, you might be walking in here trying to do something and your foot might go through the floor. Oh, dear. It's this grand old light fixture, actually. Yeah. I just noticed that. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That seems a bit wasted in here. I feel like that needs a better home. Probably need to get my uh, chisels and wood hammer. And oh, just make you're sure so clever. Can, just make sure that I can get it in there. You're like clever, handsome so husband. So supports it. Don't be silly. <laughs> well, you are. I mean, look at that. You just made a beam to go on a floor. Yeah, I would have bought one if they'd got one, but they didn't have one. So. Yes, well, pandemic, uh, pandemic creativity. Oh, okay. I was going to say, needs must when the devil drives. But well, there you go, that too. It's the pandemic equivalent of that. But, but nobody's driving anywhere these days because we're not allowed to go any further than 30 kilometers from our house. <laughs> so, unless the, the devil likes to stick close to home. <laughs> well, I say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get a cup of tea. I hope you I'm join me. Tea. So there you go, a new floor. All cleaned up, ready for the, under for the cushioning and the carpet. <laughs> so Isabella, this is a very <laughs> special cheese experience okay. that we're going to have with you this evening. No! <laughs> no! No! Stop feeding Pavlova! Stop it! The cheese is not for her! I didn't give her cheese. 
Oh, that's even worse. I gave you her gave sausage. her sausage? Yeah, she likes sausage. Oh, this is why she keeps back. So today we are having a very special cheese experience, Isabella. Okay. Because this is an aperitif cheese, and we haven't featured an aperitif cheese yet. We are featuring Comte, and this is a, a cheese that has been aged for 18 months, but it can be bought much younger, it can be bought a little bit older, up to, up to two years old. Um, you've had Comte many times, <laughs> but <laughs> this is not your first time having Comte, mm -hmm. but we thought that we would share a special romantic story Aww. with you about my first time having Comte. And uh, first of all, aperitif, as many of you know, is pre-dinner drinks, often served with little snacks. And Comte is the perfect cheese to cut up into cubes and have with this. But Simon, I thought that you might tell Isabella the, about the romantic time that we had Comte for the first time. Aww. I can vaguely remember. You can remember it <laughs> well. I know you can. <laughs> uh, we were in Paris. We just got, we just got uh, over to France and uh, we were at a place near Rugrenau. Rugrenau has one of the best cheese shops in uh, Paris, certainly, and possibly in the world. I think um, it's the best one in the you world. Think it's the best one in the world, okay. But it's a small cheese shop, mm -hmm. and you know you've come to the cheese shop because when you arrive near it in the street, you can smell it <laughs> as you come up to it. So not only is the cheese stinky, but the shop is stinky. Oh. So as you come along the street, you can smell... Oh, it smells uh, beautiful. <laughs> you can smell all the cheese. And I went in looking for some cheese for us uh, for an aperitif mm -hmm. uh, one day. I didn't really know the French cheeses that well. And mm. uh, the lady there who uh, served me said the Comte was, you know, one of the best uh, cheeses to have with uh, an aperitif. It has a very grainy, it has a grainy texture, mm -hmm. but also a very good, f nice flavor. So the story was that this is our first cheese that we really tasted together uh, in France. And I took it home uh, to our apartment where mm -hmm. we were and um, your mother, your mother and I had aperitif and we had some Comte cheese. So it was a nice memory. One of our first memories of being in France, you know, everybody talks about coming for cheese and food and everything else and wine, and uh, that was one of our special, uh, one of our special moments. I remember it was so romantic. It was obviously before you were born, and uh, so it was even more romantic because because you know the romance dwindled ever so slightly when you came along, and uh, it did. No, Not every true. day gets more romantic with me in the picture. Not of course. true. Uh, of course. Yes. Well, <laughs> Here you go. Well. Take, a, take your sword. And, uh, oh. and today we're serving our Comte with a nice epe, um, with a swashbuckling <laughs> hand guard. Yes. A 17th, a 17th century or 18th century copy of. Uh, Pavlova. Oh, this is this one. The three musketeers. Any. So here's three to the three musketeers. Here's to the three musketeers. Are we the three musketeers. Mm. Cheese is not good for you. Well, for me, no. Comte will always be very romantic because it was what is good our for first you, French cheese in Paris. In a little bit of stop! <laughs> a little bit of sausage. <laughs> yes. Now this this sausage also, by the way, I should say this uh, has Comte in it. In a strange twist of. Uh, meat and cheese meeting each other literally in one snack. So this has cheese, Comte cheese and sausage together. It's almost the perfect French invention. Your, your hand is about to be the next snack. Sausage and cheese in the same snack. Pavlova. We've also had a busy time car shopping. Uh, we have a UK right-hand drive car, which I don't enjoy driving over here, and my own car is 20 years old. <laughs> that part of our recent lives has been very boring and time-consuming, but we did have a sneaky side adventure in the exquisite town of Saumur while driving home from the car dealership last night, which we'll show you now. Can you kiss me, heaven sighs, and all close my
out car shopping and driving home, we couldn't resist pulling over to show you this spectacular sight. We have to hurry because curfew is upon us, but look behind us, it's the magnificent Chateau de Sonia. And it is absolutely wonderful. And you can see down below us, they're actually doing reparations to the chateau. And so we kind of snuck in in the park, but hopefully we'll be able to bring you inside very soon. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can see the River Loire, which is just below. Yes. In fact, you might just see it through the gap. <laughs> behind <Right there>. me, <laughs> behind me, behind me there. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's go, let's go check it out, see if we can get in closer. Yes. It's windy today. Yes. We're, we've been having terrible, terrible weather for May. And it's raining every day. Here, down there, you can see the work the that they're doing. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at what they've been making. You see how they've cut, they've cut them and they've, um, they've shaved them all. Pieces on the left, they've cleaned them. The ones on the right, those are the finished pieces. They're the new pieces they've ordered. We're feeling really naughty because we're not supposed to be up here. Everything's still closed. But look how amazing this is. The office is open. Spectacular. Look right at the gold on the roof where they've just redone all of that. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> We came um, here. We came here a few years ago, and it was nowhere near as grand. Oh wow! Look, they're restoring everything. Look at the look at the town of uh, Somio down there. Let's show them. You see it all from here. It's beautiful in the light. Spectacular. And then over there, you can see the town of Saumur away to the left. Do you see it all? Yes. Well, you just go down a bit further, you can see the river. Yes. And here's the restaurant, the L'Orangerie, which I guess is closed right now. Of course, and the beautiful flowers. Oh, they smell great. It's jasmine. the extra parts of the chateau, the accommodation and the offices. Ah, look at this. Now, if you look away to the left, you can see the River Loire, La Loire, as it comes into Saumur with the bridges and the church spire. There are a number of bridges here. And then the river goes down below, and there's the town of Saumur. And I Look at this castle, isn't it beautiful? It's magnificent. It's incredible. Look at the big walls. Wonderful view from up here. And then the river. I'm about to walk through the old drawbridge. Here we go. I have a handsome prince waiting for me on the other side. Yes, no. but if you look over there, uh -huh. you can see where they're putting in the new stone. You see it just at the top of the scaffolding there, along the thing. You can see the new pieces that are already in place. So all the stone that's down there, on the left, this ground is being taken up along here. You see that wooding, that wood that they put on the side to protect it. They drag it up there, probably with a lift or something, and then they're fitting it over there. So they're replacing this. Um, what they're doing is they're restoring this uh, rampart. Yeah. How exciting is this to be able to show you this incredible castle just as we're driving home from car shopping. <laughs> the magic spell you cast, this is love. And lastly, it has been unseasonably cold and raining here for three weeks, which means overgrown grass, weeds, and most importantly, 
what's happening with the wine? You may have read in the press about the late season frost threatening the 2021 vintages. We took you into the vineyards for our third episode when we played in the snow. <laughs> and here's some video I took three weeks ago during the later freeze, which occurred after Easter. Here we are again in the Janier vineyards located right behind our house. For over two weeks, the temperatures dropped to below zero degrees Celsius, which was devastating for the growth of the vines late in the spring season. So the winemakers placed these giant jars of paraffin amongst the vines, which they then lit every single night, creating a literal smoke screen to protect the gentle buds on the grape vines. But not all of them survived. This is what the vineyards look like now. Let's see what we think. We're out taking Pavlova for a walk. Not only is it the first time the sun's been out for weeks, but Pavlova has also been ill. And she finally went to the vet. She's got antibiotics. And as you can see behind me, she is really, really happy to be out for a walk. And then I also wanted to show you the field behind me. Isn't it beautiful? Just little yellow flowers as far as the eye can see. Right behind me, you can see a little poppy popping out its head. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see some more nice things on our walk. But our most important thing is to check on how the vines are doing. So up we come, up the hill, up towards the vineyards. was a just in the distance. On our little walk up to the vineyards, we pass our neighbors, who are winemakers, and they look like they're having a busy afternoon. Look, they've had all their bottles delivered. And some lots of activity down there. You can see the caves going into the hillside. And I'm heading up this way. There they are examining their vats down there. And this is the back of our neighbors, little caves. These are just little storage sheds. And in there he keeps his wine. He's invited us over a few times to have some wine with him, but it's still the pandemic. But hopefully soon. Well, here we are. We've made it into the vineyards and it's looking pretty good. Look at the little rabbit. See all the vines are starting to produce their leaves and uh, yes. straggly up until a few weeks ago. I think this means this year's wine might be saved. So the great buds. That's what they look like when they're tiny. Isn't it incredible? And now we're coming up to the very spot where Simon and I had our little snowball fight. I think that was episode two or three, but it's just amazing the difference that a couple of months makes. And now, let's see if Simon can finally come out of the turret. <laughs> what did you think I was going to say? This is la vie when... I can't believe mm -hmm. how well you are doing and how great this is looking. Good, I'm glad. So you've been in here for days now. 
Uh, this is the second week of building this place. But remember, I had to, I wasted the first. Well, I didn't waste them. But I had the first few days doing the floor because it was rotten. That's right. Which now has carpet. Uh -huh. So, Simon, uh -huh. when are you going to come out of the closet? this rate, you're going to be in the closet forever. That suits me fine. You just, you just lit up, by the way. I know. <laughs> you can remember what the floor looked like before. Isn't it fantastic now? Carpet and everything. Well done, Simon. Can I see it? Yeah, now? come in, come on in. It's, uh, it's better than it was. <laughs> amazing. Look at all of this storage. Well, it's good for shoes and uh, handbags and uh, a few small items like that. It's wonderful. And then we'll create uh, the hanging spaces behind you. Gosh, you so. have worked so hard. And oh, yeah, here's some of the ceiling rows in hanging and space. Yeah. And this is a rod for hanging as well. Um, <laughs> you can put all the ceiling rows. <laughs> uh, You've got. Have you seen the little light hole? The little light is beautiful. Isn't and it? that is. It's just wonderful. And and look, because it's uh, because nothing was was wired when this house was built. Everything is is run on the outside. Yeah, it's fine. It's, for a storage. It's for fine this, for, for storage. This room is great for the turret. Carpets down, and uh, skirtings in. Molding on the top, ceiling rows, well lots done. of lots I of shelves. I love these six little windows. Aren't they sweet? Yeah, the windows are pretty. And you did carpet, which is just fantastic. Yeah, I've got a bar to put across there. We can do that later. But for now, this will, you know, it's good. It is wonderful. <laughs> oh, wait, turn to the side. What? Looks like you might. Looks like you might be ready for another haircut. Do I, I am. Have, do I have to pull the bowl out again? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> That's how all of our watchers we're now, were we're introduced now, to you in our first yeah, episode. <laughs> now that we're vaccinated, we can go and get a proper haircut. Yes. They're all opening. All Absolutely. the hairdressers are opening. Well, I think, I think yeah. that you might just need a proper haircut again. Do you really like it? I really love what you've done in here. Oh. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You were really hard and it was it was even, hard work it wasn't even for you the floor was, was new. i know it wasn't it's for so me at sweet. all it isn't for me it's trapped in the turret yeah for a couple of weeks i know and, and soon i'll be able to soon i'll be able to let down my hair and cry rapunzel <laughs> oh yes you could well actually yes it's just long <laughs> enough you just open that little window little, and little, <laughs> tilt i need to wait up here a few more months before it goes a little longer and i can let my hair down <laughs> rapunzel yeah. I'll have to crawl up and rescue you. Oh, well, that would be good. <laughs> Before we leave you this week, just wanted to show you what we found in the corner of the garden. Lilies of the Valley, the perfect thing to celebrate the recent American Mother's Day, the upcoming French Mother's Day, and to say we love you to mothers everywhere. Meanwhile, until next time, we send all of you our Chateau love. Every day one seemed to die